Let's give the Lord a hand. He's a good God. You know, today we're going live and we're going live right now on all of our campuses. So what I'm going to do is mention the campuses and I want you to just welcome them to this campus today. Arrowhead Campus. Our Arizona campus, Kenya campus, Pomona campus, LA campus, and our Tijuana, Mexico campus. Let's give the Lord a hand. They're with us live right now. We just thank God that we get an opportunity to continue spreading this good news to areas across the world. And I know right now, Gavin, I mean, not Gavin, Gabriel is in L.A. and they're having a right now watch party there. And, and we got young men that are being saved on those streets already. One of, the, one, of, one of the most notorious gang members, he gave his life to the Lord. He's been serving God, being discipled. And he's there right now in Gabriel's living room in L.A. right now. Um, next week, interesting, there's a church that wants to... They want to give us their church as well. And we got teams that are visiting that church. They've been actually preaching. Our team has been preaching in another church in La, in La Puente for now, now two months. Our team's been preaching over there. They want to hand over their congregation to us. We're praying about that. But isn't God good that he allows us to influence other people with his goodness? We're so grateful for that. We're starting a new series, everyone. And we're talking about eight, eight principles that cause us to experience the abundant life. What I mean by that is, is that you can be saved and not, be experience, not experience the abundance of God in your life. The abundant life has to do with peace, has to do with joy, and it has to do with overflow as well. This is what that means, is that God doesn't just want you to just make it and survive. God wants to bless you in victory, that you're not just a conqueror, you're more than a conqueror. What God wants to do with your life is he wants to meet your needs, but he also wants you to have some leftovers to share with others. How many believe that's a real blessing? And we could all start where we're at. I'm going to give you an example. If you have two cans of beans, you could eat one and you have overflow. Give the other one away. And you know what happens? You start getting a harvest, a whole bunch of frijoles. Come on, that's how it starts. You work with what you got. But God really wants you in a place that you're actually building a wonderful life. And we can build a wonderful life, build a wonderful marriage, build a wonderful ministry, build a, one, a, great, a, a great business. And how we're going to do it is practicing the principles of God. You no longer need to worry and be anxious. You just, you just gotta make sure, am I practicing the principles? Because if you are, you'll get the results or the benefits of practicing those principles. I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm talking about. A farmer doesn't need to stretch, stress out about his next harvest. He just needs to make sure he puts seed in the ground and waters it. He already knows I put seed in the ground and I already know what my, I'm going to harvest because I planted watermelon seed. I'm going to get some watermelons. And this is the way life is. God has given us seed, time, and harvest. And all he's saying, what you put in is what you're going to get out. Stop freaking about your, about your future. You're a farmer. Plant the right seed and you're going to have a right life. I'm going to get that. But it, principles, say with me, principles. So we're going to learn eight principles. I, I, my book's coming out next, next week, a big portion of it. And it's going to be really a 40-day devotional life. But at the end, this is what's going to happen. As you learn these principles, it's going to change your life forever. You're going to start living a, a, a principle-driven life. And this is what's going to happen. It's going to build your confidence. And you're going to say, I know my life's going to turn out great because I'm practicing the right principles. You guys got that? We are farmers, not beggars. Say with me. We are farmers, not beggars. And if you don't farm and you don't plant seed, you have to beg for someone else's harvest. Either you're a farmer or a beggar. I want to be a farmer. Come on. Uh, with a harvest to share with others. That's what's going to happen. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We welcome all the campuses today. And I'm asking you to help us to understand your word. 
help me to teach your word. Holy Spirit, we've been celebrating you all month long. And I just thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're here. You are our guide. You're our teacher. We, we just don't want to learn it. We want to have the strength to apply it so we can start seeing new results, new lives, new marriages, new, new results in our lives. We just thank you, Lord. It's happening now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Living a principle-driven life. I want to just cover the word principle. And if you have a pen and paper, take notes. It's really important to get these notes on paper. And then I really believe this. The effort you put in and studying something is going to determine the, re the results of the return you're going to get. But principle, it's a spiritual law. Say it with me. It's a spiritual law. Spiritual laws don't change. That means it's the same today, tomorrow, and forever. They work for you. They work against you. It's a truth. It's a command. A rule of conduct or action that never changes and always works. It's a prescript. Prescripts. The word pre means before and script means written. I love watching Mission Impossible movies. Because Tom Cruise could jump out of a plane with no parachute and he lives. I don't know how he does it. Like, Tom, don't do that. He just jumps out. And, and he jumps out by faith because he already knows what's in the script. A bird's going to fly by. He's going, no, I'm just kidding. But we don't know. But we know this. Wouldn't it be great that you already knew that it was already written and you already knew the results and it didn't matter what trouble you were in it didn't matter how bad it looked you already know it's in the script and it's going to turn out great all i have to do is say the lines jump out of the plane and it's all going to work out that's how it works prescript it's already been written what that means when i don't know what to do i just go back to the principles of god i apply them to my life and it leads me to success truth about principles it is a true principle of God if it works for everybody everywhere and at any time so when you read the scriptures there's principles and you'll you'll see uh, in scripture you will have if and then statements if you do this this will happen I'm gonna give you an example if you forgive others it's principle you'll be forgiven if you don't forgive them you won't be forgiven how many know that's a principle there's a principle, it's another principle, give and you'll receive. That's a principle of God. And it works for everybody, everywhere, in every nation, in every city, and every family. Three insights about principles. That's all we're going to cover today. Three insights about principles. Number one, God has given us principles to guide us. God has given us principles to guide us. In Psalms 119.40, it says, I long for your guiding principles. David is the one that wrote, King David is the one that wrote the Psalms. And he says, what I really desire is your guiding principles. I'm a leader, I'm a king, and I don't know always what to do, but I long for you to share your principles with me because once I learn your principles and apply them, I know everything's going to turn out fine. My daughter, Aliana just got married yesterday. And there she is, Aliana and Jesse. She's my fourth daughter, and, and I'm giving her a lot of advice right now on life, and it's really a quick download because we didn't know she was going to get married till like right around a month and a half ago. This is one of those quick weddings. We were talking, and, and Pastor Robert needs some help in in Arizona, and I started thinking about it. Jesse and Aliana would be a great help. I started thinking about it. Jesse and Aliana would be a great help in Arizona. They're a great help here, but I think they'd be a bigger help in Arizona with Pastor Robert. But the problem is they weren't married. I began to share with Aliana, go, Aliana, what do you think about going to Arizona? She goes, I don't know. Um, and I knew why she was saying, I don't know, because Jesse's here. I go, but what if you and Jesse went over there and you just got married? How about that? She goes, well, let me, I would like to go to Arizona first and 
I go, okay. So then I talked to Jesse. I go, Jesse, what do you think? And he was more like, yeah, let's do it. So they went to Arizona and they came back and they walked the land and they said, yes, it is a land flown with milk and honey. We want to go. And this is what we did. We prepared a wedding <laughs> right around a month and a half period of time. They did a great job. Yesterday was their day. But I've been given a lot of advice because I want my daughter, Aliana, and I want Jesse to succeed in life. And there's principles that cause success. So we started talking about some of the decisions that they're making. And I know this, if they break God's guiding principles, even though they want to succeed, they won't. You know what the Bible says? My people perish for lack of knowledge. What that means is that they're perishing, they're dying, they're failing, they're destroying their lives because they don't know my principles. If they knew my principles, they wouldn't be dying, they wouldn't be depressed, they wouldn't be anxious, they wouldn't be full of fear, their relationship wouldn't be falling apart because if they would apply my principles, my principles work everywhere. How many want to have a successful, abundant, joy-filled, victorious life? That happens through practice, practicing principles. So now, Aliana and Jesse are like started from scratch. They both at that time, a month and a half ago, don't have a job. None of them have a job. They don't have an income. And we go, Jesse, you got to get a J-O-B. You know me. And, and the, what we meant by that is he has to be provider. So Jesse takes a, he takes a plane and he goes to Arizona, back to Arizona. He starts looking for a job. He thinks he's going to get a job at UPS. And, and, and then when he gets down there, they really aren't hiring right now. He don't know what to do. It, it, but this is what happened. A job came up in the church. To, and the, the guy owns a business and he's a rattlesnake exterminator. So Jesse, Jesse goes, well, I'll talk to him, right? And this is what Aliana told me. She goes, when we get to Arizona, we've got a plan of action. I go, what's your plan? And they said, well, Jesse wants a truck because in Arizona, they need a, you need a truck. That's truck country. That's what they're saying. And then I'm going to buy me a car because my car is not that nice. And, you know, it has a lot of miles. So I'm going to buy me a car. So we're going to get both two cars, that's what we're going to do. And I go, really? And then I go, no. Because you're breaking a principle. You know what the Bible says? There's a time, there's a time where you could actually finance a car. But make sure you're not financing a car before you got your life in order. You finance a car from overflow. You don't finance a car when you, you're barely trying to make it. Come on, don't be car rich. It's getting quiet in here now. I go, no, don't do that. So her car, her car, I go, you're going to use your car. Your car actually runs good. It really does run good. And you know what happened within that week? The storm came in, remember that little rain we had? There was a big tree on our front yard and it landed on her car. $7,000 worth of damage, right? So I looked at that car and I, uh, observed it. Well, her, her whole her whole side view mirror fell off. She had a, a, a sunroof. It broke. And then it landed on her front hood. She couldn't open it. And I looked at the car. And she got it checked out. 7000 worth of damage. The car's not even worth 7000 I go, honey, I go, I go, we're, we're not going to give up on that car yet. I go, let me take it to my mechanic. I mean, we'll bootleg this thing, get it back to it. I know the engine's still good, transmission's good. We can fix that stuff. Well, we did get it fixed. I, he, the guy went to the junkyard, found a hood, uh, just perfect year. He found a side view mirror, just cost me 200 bucks. And he, he fixed the glass, and it only cost me a couple hundred bucks. When it was all said and I spent like 1,200 bucks, and we got our car back on the road. And she's not in debt. Come on. I don't want her to start off. Bible says you should lend and not borrow. You guys get this. We're talking about principles of God. Now, he gets the job as an exterminator. And you know what comes with the job? He gets a truck. 
They said, with the job, we're going to give you a truck right now. In March, we're going to give you a brand new truck. No payments. They pay the gas. So he has his truck. Aliana has her car. Now they need a place to live. You never want to get to the point that you don't, if you're at this point, you might need to back up. I will say this, downsize so you could upsize. God has created you to have margin. Some would say margin. That means what's coming in, there should be a margin. That means you shouldn't have what's coming in and what's going out is more than what's coming in. And that means if you, if you're in a position that you got more going out than coming in, it just means that you got to downsize. So making sure that you have some extra because you're a farmer so you can plant seed. You never want all your seed to turn into bread. You don't want to eat all your seed. You want some of your seed to be bread and you want some of your seed to remain seed so you can plant it so you can have a future harvest. So I talked to her about this and now they're looking for a place and she gets super excited because they're looking for this whole month and they can't find nothing. They finally find a place and it's $1,500 a month. Oh my gosh, dad, it's awesome. The only thing is we need you to co-sign and we need $3,000 so we could get the, get the place locked in. And I said, okay, well, how much does Jesse make? Well, he makes this much. I go, baby, if he makes that much, once you take the taxes out and once you take everything out and you take that out, you barely can make the payment. And then she says, dad, we got to figure it out too. I'm going to get a job. I go, so you're going to depend on a job you don't have to get a place that you can't afford? And I said, baby, I want to help you, but no. I go, you need to be right around 850, 800. Maybe 900. She goes, Dad, there's nothing. I go, pray. So I'm on vacation when she calls me with this. And I felt so bad because I want her to get a place. And I know they're getting married in a week or two. I go, man, they need to get a place. You know what happened within the last, you know what happened last week? The week they're getting married, they get a call. There's a girl that got in an accident. And she has a house that she's only paying, a house that she's only paying 850 for. And somehow they found out that Jesse and Aliana are moving to Arizona. And the lady could rent that place for $2,000. And she said, God told me I'm not supposed to put it on the market. I'm supposed to save it for Jesse and Aliana. They signed a contract and now they got a place for eight fifty. dollars It's within budget. They don't have debt. Come on. They're going to have a margin to be able to plant seed and have an abundant life. Abundance. So inside, look at Psalms 11940. It says this, I long for your guiding principles. I long for your what? Give me a new life in your righteousness. The word guide means to direct. It means to counsel. So let your, the principles of God direct you, counsel you, assist in order to reach a desired destination. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to have joy? Do you want to have some overflow? Do you want to have victory? Come on. Do you want to start winning? Come on, in your life. Do you want to pass on a blessing to your kids? It's possible if you follow God's guiding principles. They'll help you get to your desired destination. If you want to succeed, I will tell you this. God wants you to succeed more than you want to succeed. But I'm going to give you a principle. Let's say you're married and you and your wife are constantly fighting and arguing and in division. This is the principle. Wherever two or three are gathered, or wherever two agree on earth, it shall be done. But let's say you and your husband are constantly arguing. The Bible says where there's division, there's desolation. You know what desolation means? Nothing grows in an atmosphere of division. You could be praying, God, we want to prosper. We want abundance. And God is saying, I can't because you're breaking my principles. These are spiritual laws and I don't change the laws. So that means you got to change. You guys understand that, right? It means to direct, especially when traveling through an unfamiliar territory. We get God in principles from 
the word of God. Say it with me. We get guided principles from the word of God. In Psalms 119, 105 says, your word is like a lamp that guides my steps. God's word is a lamp. Either you're walking in darkness and you're not sure where you're stepping or you know the principles of God, you apply them and God's word is like a lamp and it says this, and it says, it guides my steps, a light that shows the path I should take. There's a path you should take. And God is saying, I've already given you a prescript. Follow my word, practice my principles, and you will be on the path you should take. And if you're on the path you should take, you'll get the results you've wanted. I remember when I was in the car business and, and I just got married and... And I, Lisa really has no income coming in. I am now go from, I was like Aliana and Jesse. I go from living with my mommy to having a wife. And the problem was I was in a career that I just started. And this was a career. I, I was selling cars and this was the issue. If I don't sell, there's no income. That was it. So I'd go to work stressed out. Like, and, and this is the deal I would do. I wouldn't eat until I sold something. Like I would fast. I could, and I would tell myself, you don't deserve to eat nothing. You haven't even sold nothing today. And that would be the attitude. But I remember that there was a seminar from a gentleman that was really successful at selling cars. The seminar cost $500. I had $500. And I wanted to get some principles to succeed. And I remember investing that $500. I spent all day at that seminar. And I was just hoping I could get some keys or principles that would help me succeed. Because I knew this, that success was an, it was an accident. Success was a skill of applied knowledge. And if I could get that knowledge, I could get the results that he had. He was a human like, a human like me. He was practicing principles that made him successful. And if I could get some of those principles and practice them, I could start unlocking the prosperity and the abundance that was in my business. And I remember that weekend, I took a note, a notepad, and I was writing notes like I was going crazy, digging for gold. And I asked myself at the end of the day, what did you learn, Marco? And there was only one principle that, that stood out really, it, it stood out and this was the principle. He said this, if you show interest in others, they'll show interest in you. What he was saying is stop focusing on you getting results. Just show interest in people. Love them. Care for them. And at the end, they'll care about you. And I started practicing that. And after that seminar, just practicing one principle, and really it's a principle of God. After I practiced that principle, I had the greatest month I ever had in the car business because I started locking and unlocking the abundance. And what God is saying right now, there's somebody in this room that God, this is what he's saying. I'm going to give you some principles to unlock your family, unlock your future, unlock your destiny, unlock your money. And this is what's going to happen. As you apply these principles, you're no longer going to be freaked out about your future because you know I'm living a principle-driven life. And I know if I do this, I get those results. I'm ready for God's guiding principles to guide me. Insight number two, following God's principles guides us to the abundant life. Following God's principles. Now, when God gives you instructions, he's not giving you instructions so you just obey him. He's giving you instructions because he's trying to lead you to his abundance and his provision. Have you ever read this scripture in Psalms 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Want. The Lord is my shepherd, that means he leads me to still, still waters. He guides me to green pastures. But we need to be led to the provision, led to the peace. And if he's your shepherd, that means you're letting him lead your life and he leads our life through his principles. I love God's word because it works for everyone. Is there anybody longing to learn the guiding principles so you could be led to a place of no lack in your life? Look at Psalms 119.4. Let's read the back half. I long for your guiding principles. Look at this. Give me a new life in your righteousness. This is what it's saying. Your guiding principles really give me a new life. 
And that word life, we covered this this Wednesday, but I want to reemphasize because repetition is the mother of learning. Is this word higher. Someone say higher. God's going to take you higher, right? God's God in principles will take you higher. But it doesn't mean higher, but it's a Greek a Hebrew word, higher, and it means God's God in principles will give you a prosperous life, a restored life. Today, there's somebody here, you've had some major losses, and you think it's too late. And God says, nah, follow my principles, and I'll restore what the enemy has stolen out of your life. It's not over. We serve a God that can raise the dead, and he can restore areas that the enemy stolen from you. It's not too late. A healthy life. Say it with me, healthy life. When you practice the principles of God, it makes your life healthier, your mind healthier, your marriage healthier. Your relationship's healthier. It means a joyful and hope-filled life. Do you really believe that God saved you to leave you in depression? And nowhere in the Bible is depression a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's crazy that sometimes we claim our depression instead of claiming our inheritance which is the joy of the Lord. Now, I understand they diagnosed you and you got a chemical imbalance. I understand all that. And you've been using marijuana to help you. But I, I, I'm going to let you know something. There's something greater than the marijuana. And it's God and his principles. If you think that high has made you feel a little better, come on, get higher with the life of God. And if you practice the principles of God, God is saying, I'll take you higher than your high. It means to revive from discouragement. Literally, this word means his guiding principles will revive you from discouragement, from depression, from anxiety, from fear, from sleepless nights. Some of us are tormented at night and God is saying, if you'll start living according to my principles, I'll give you your peace back. I'll give you your dreams back. I'll give you your family back. I want to take you to a higher place, but I'm going to lead you there. It's not going to be an accident. It's not going to be a mistake. We got to stop having a lotto mentality. If I just get the right numbers, man, if I just could roll sevens, we must stop putting our faith in luck. We must stop putting our faith in the right numbers. We must stop putting our faith in someone somehow giving you something that you've not put yourself in position to get. We got to stop being a victim and we got to start saying this. God has created me to live an abundant life and he's given me principles to unlock the abundance of my old life. I am no longer waiting for it to happen. I'm going to make sure I make it happen. I'm going to hear God's word. I'm going to apply it and I'm going to start getting the results. Let's give God some praise. Come on. This is for everybody. It means to revive from discouragement and sickness. It means to strengthen. It means to cause to grow. It means recovery. It means to make whole and complete. It means to save. I love all those words. God's principles can do all that? Yes. My girls are going to succeed if they listen to the principles I give them. If they follow the principles I've learned, that have allowed me and Lisa to have a marriage of 33 years. And we love each other more than ever. I, I look at Lisa like, man, you look young. I know she's older. She's 50-something. 50 what? She's older than me. I know that. She robbed the cradle with me. I just say, ain't that that. The little cougar. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just teased her. Well, anyways, I looked at her right now. I go, baby, you look so, I was just telling her right now, you look so beautiful. Now, I say, but why, why you say that? Because I believe it. 33 years, and she still looks good to me. You know what this means is? You know what this means? 
is that when you serve the Lord, everything stays fresh. Come on. Everything grows. Everything increases. Everything goes into abundance. It goes from little to more. And no matter where you're at right now, God has said, I got abundance in your future. Your best life wasn't yesterday. So stop focusing on what you lost. I got something way better in your future. Just follow my lead and your best days are ahead of you. Give God some praise that it's not over. Your best days are ahead of you. Start where you're at. Look at this. It's a promise. Someone say promise. This is a principle. A successful, look at this, what I'm saying. A successful and happy life always follows an obedient life. Don't expect to have success and happiness when you're not following the principles that get you there. Look at Job 3611. If, now you know it's a principle because it starts with if. If you do this, this will be the results. That's a principle. If they, I love the word they. You know why the word they is really important? Because it could be anybody. It's basically saying whoever does this if, this will be the results. It don't matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, you live in San Bernardino, you live in Tijuana, you live in Kenya, you live in L.A., you live in the hood, you come from a good family, a bad family, you got a job, you don't have a job, you don't feel good right now, you feel a little sick, you just got some bad news. God is saying, forget about all that. Anybody that does this will get these results. Are you excited to find out what the results that you'll get if you'll just serve God and obey him? Look what the scripture says. If they serve and obey him, he will make them successful and they will have a happy life. This scripture is saying, if you're not happy, you're breaking principles. If you don't have a happy marriage, there's principles that you're breaking. And if you would acknowledge I'm breaking principles, this is what happened. You could turn it around and God says, if you will just serve me. Someone say serve God. Serve God just means, it means to be led by God, to worship God, to work for God, to use your gifts and talents and resources for God. He goes, if you would make your life about serving God, being led by his principles, obeying his word, I guarantee you this. God will make you successful and God will make you happy. I love that. You mean I just have to like follow him? I'd be happy? Yeah. Follow him and look. it's impossible to follow God and not be led to a better place. Because God's always leading you to a better place. After you die, you go to a better place. You go to heaven. But could it be that you're just waiting to die to experience heaven? And God says, don't you know that I sent my son to make heaven available to you right now? That you could get a down payment on what's coming. You don't have to wait to get there to experience the peace of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. Come on, the prosperity of the Lord, the provision of the Lord. Doesn't it say in his word that he'll supply all of your need according to his riches and glory? What well, God is saying, my riches up there are available to you down here if you practice my principles. You know, um, Aliana and Jesse, they're in my mind. I, I, I did a little speech at the wedding. You might say, what, is, what was it? This is what I said. When I married Lisa, I remember that day. I remember my feelings at that day, my emotions about that day, my mindset that day. And I remember telling myself about this. I am a hundred percent sure that this is my wife and we're going to have an amazing life. Now you would say, but why were you so sure? The reason I was so sure is because Lisa was serving God. 
I was serving God, and we live by the principles of God. And if I serve God, and she serves God, and we obey God, we're guaranteed to have a successful and happy marriage and raise some godly children. This is not an accident. Come on. There are principles that we can learn to unlock the abundance in our life. Anybody want some happiness in your life? That word successful means they'll be made prosperous, happy, joyful, morally good, kind, wealthy, um, the, the best life, the good life. I love that. If you just serve me and obey me, I guarantee you this. I won't have you like the devil that you've been serving. He'll rip you off. He'll kill, steal, and destroy. You serve me, I'll give you the best life. You serve me, I'll give you a beautiful life. You serve me, I'll give you, come on, I'll, I'll give you a good life. I'll make you morally good. I'll even make you nice. I've learned this, the more we serve the devil, the meaner we are. Some of you guys right now are still mad dogging me, like, what, what? I'm not here to fight you, homie, kick back. I'm here to lead you, come on, to the life that you've been looking for. Me and you ain't the fight, it's what's here that's a fight. Come on, stop fighting with your wife, stop fighting with your kids, stop fighting in your hood, give your life to Jesus, and start living the abundant life that God has for you. Give just once, come on, give God just five seconds of praise if you're ready to take control of your life. And inside number three, we'll end it here. Now, every principle of God is a two-edged sword. Someone say two-edged. Every principle of God is not only a two-edged sword, it's, a, it's like a coin. Heads, tails, blessings, curses. What this means, when you apply the principles of God, they're guaranteed to produce blessing and unlock abundance in your life, period. If you disobey them, you're guaranteed to destroy your life. Let's read this last scripture here. And it's a scary scripture. And it's Job 36, 12. It says, but if, this is, remember, Job 36, 11 said, if they serve and obey him, he'll make them successful and they'll have a happy life. But the verse right after that, it says, you have an option. You could obey the principles live by the principles or ignore them. But if they refuse to obey him, they will be destroyed. They will be like, they will die like fools. Every principle of God has a blessing attached to it, but also you can release a spirit, a curse on your life because I want you to get this. It's not that God is cursing you. God gives you the instructions that leads you to life. And if you don't stay on the path that leads you to life, that means you're on the path that leads to destruction. So he gives you an alternative. Get off that path and get on the right path. I want to lead you. So I'm giving you my principles so you can have life and you don't end up destroyed. I look up the word destroyed, which is crazy. But look at this. How, how serious the word destroyed, what, what it means. It's a Hebrew word, a bar, and it means to be passed over or by. This is what it means. That God wants to send a blessing your way. He has your address on it, but it never gets you. It has to pass you over. Not because it wasn't meant for you. It's that you are breaking a principle. Some of us right now, you cannot have peace. You cannot have, not have joy because you have unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. And yet you want to succeed, but unless you forgive, the blessings are going to keep passing you by. And look what it says. They pass you by and they pass into the hands of another. What should have came to you is now going to someone else's address that's living by the principles of God. If you're not sowing, don't expect for a harvest, even though God wants you to have a harvest. You can't have open windows over your life if you're saying, I don't want to live by the principles of tithes and offerings. I want to do it my way. You could do it your way, but understand this, there will be no harvest coming your way. It's going to pass you by and you're going to continue having closed windows over your life because the principles are being broken. Is that right? It means to fail, to be overwhelmed by the enemy and sorrow. 
prayers not to pass prayers not to pass through and money not to get to you and money not to get to you that means there's money that God wants to get to you but he's saying you're breaking the principles so I can't get what I want to get to you because you're a principle breaker so this is what happens even though I have a blessing for you I can't bless disobedience I remember this building that we have here guys we only got it because of the principles of the Lord I remember that we went into escrow on this building with no money in the bank. I was fighting for two years with the owner to give us the building. He goes, no, no, no. He said, I'd rather die than give you the building. That's what he told me. Two years I'm fighting him. I go, God, I know you told us that's our building. This is, this is what happened. The second year, he goes, I don't know why but I'm gonna give you the building. And, and he gave us the building without checking our credit and without even looking at our bank accounts. It was a warehouse. How are we even gonna build this? How we were gonna build it is continue loving people, feeding the hungry, taking care of the poor, Come on, helping people get off the streets. And God is saying, he who is generous to the poor will lack nothing. God is saying, continue practicing my principles. And I guarantee you, I will release the abundance. And now we're in this building. How you say, how did it happen? It was a miracle that we got into this building. But God has a miracle ready for you. And God is saying, I know it looks impossible, but it's not impossible for me. Will you allow me to do a miracle in your life by just obeying my principles let's give one more praise to God and one last thing about these principles you be, scripture says they will be destroyed and this is another thing that was really it came out it says to cause to suffer to offer your children to Molech this is what he's saying the blessings as you obey my word are going to be generational I'm not only going to bless you I'm going to bless your kids. You might be saying, I got some kids that are knuckleheads. God says, my spirit is stronger than their knucklehead spirit. You just obey my principles, and I guarantee you this, and you start claiming the promises of God for you and your house will serve the Lord. Every single kid in your house is going to serve God. God is saying, I'll rebuke that devil that's holding them. If you'll just practice my principles, I guarantee you this, it's time to stop giving our children over to the spirit of destruction and say, I'm not giving my kids to hell. I'm not giving my kids to the devil. I'm going to practice the principles of God, and I'm going to raise godly children that love God, they're going to follow my legacy. I live by God's principles and I will see God's success in my life. Amen. Today's your day. We're gonna, it is, Jesus said this. He says, those that hear my word and do it, they're the ones that build their house on the rock. And when the storms come, and the winds come and the rain comes, the house will stand because it was built on the principles of God. But those who hear my sayings, hear my teachings, and refuse to practice the principles, they will be like fools that build their house on sand. And when the winds came and the rains came and the waves came, the house fell and it was a complete disaster or ended in complete destruction. All it's saying is every one of us will have storms, will have difficulties, will have some hard times. But if you build your house on the principles of God, you'll still be standing here a year from now, two years from now three years from now and I guarantee you this at the end of your life God will say well done good and faithful servant and it was God who's going to say you're moving towards happiness you're moving towards restoration you're moving towards revival you're moving towards breakthrough and it's starting right now as you're saying God make me a person that's principle driven your family needs it guys my girls need it I got five girls and how do you do it? 
I just live by God's principles. Because, you know, I can't be there with them all the time. How many know that? I don't know what they're watching on the internet. And I can't be like the Holy Ghost police 24 hours a day. They're adults. I can't control if there's a guy trying to pick up on them. I, I, I mean, I wish. I said, well, well, hey, what's up, man? I'm her dad. You have to go through me to get to her. I said. But I, I can't do that. I'm going to have to trust in the principles of God and allow God to, God to do the work in my babies and in my wife and in me and in you. I wish, I mean, as a pastor, I'm like, I could just teach, but you don't have to listen to anything I'm saying. I want you to succeed. And sometimes I want it more than most people. I pray for you. I'm concerned about you. I get ready. You know what time I got here today? I got here at 3 o'clock in the morning praying, getting ready for this morning to just present today. Because you matter to me. That's why I do it. I want you to give me a testimony. Say, Pastor, that message gave me a key to unlock my life. I was just so worried and concerned and always hoping that it would turn out fine, but I was putting my energy in the wrong place. My imagination was going crazy. Worst case scenarios were always in my mind. And then I started realizing if I just practice God's principles, I don't have to worry about anything. If I just seek first the kingdom of God, God will add everything. I didn't know that. I, now I'm practicing principles and life is, is starting to start getting back in order. Today's your day. I'm going to pray right now. And I want you to buy hairs for just a second. And I want you to think about this. Is your he life headed for destruction? Or is it headed towards this new life, this success, this happiness, this joy, this abundant life that God has for you? Some of us right now, and I want you to think about this, think about it, it's you and God. If today were your last day on earth, you're not sure you're on the right path. And because you're not on the right path, this is what's going to happen. Your kids won't be on the right path. Your family will ever, never be on the right path. And God, and you're saying right now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where I die right now, I'll go to heaven. I'm not sure. Because there's only two paths. There's a path that leads to, it, it, it leads to heaven, it leads to eternal life. And there's a path that leads to destruction. And many go down that path. And you're saying, I'm not sure where I'm at, but I want to change today. I want a new beginning today. And I've realized if I could just listen to God and, begin to follow him and accept Jesus as my savior today. I could get on the right track and my life could be restored. It could be rebuilt. I could get joy again, hope again, peace again. I could get set free from addictions and depressions and anxieties. It's not too late. I'm going to count to three saying, Pastor, that's me. I need that new life today. I want to be forgiven of my sins today. I want to get back on the right track today. I want to now start living from this day forward. I need his strength, though. I need his help. I want to start living from this day forward by the principles of God. And I need God to change my heart, change my life, make me a new person. And he said, I'm not sure if I die or I go to heaven. I want you to raise your hand when I count to three. Say, Pastor, that's me. I want a new life. I want a new beginning. I want forgiveness. I want to start following Jesus. I realize I've been on the wrong path, but I want to get on the right path. I'm going to tell you, we're ready to, right when you raise your hand, everyone is going to clap for you because this is something, come on, you're going to do something about your life. You're going to make a decision that's going to change your life, change your future, change your family online. Come on, in Kenya, in Arizona, come on, in LA, all over Pomona, right now, Arrowhead, this is your moment. One, when I say raise your hand, when I count to three, Raise your hands. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want a new beginning. You want a new life. And you're saying, I'm tired of doing it my way. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow his principles. Two, when you say this, God's going to forgive you. He's going to give you the strength. You're going to get a new life. You're going to get restoration from the Lord. Three, raise your hands all over this building. Say, that's me. Raise your hands all over this building. I see the hand there. Anybody else? Come on. Anybody else saying, that's me. I want a new start. I want a new beginning. I want, I want those to raise hands. Just stand up right where you're at. Come on. Stand up where you're at. Come on. Just stand up right where you're at. Say, that's me. I want a new life. I want a new beginning. Will you do this for me?
Will you give me the honor and privilege of praying with you? Let's all stand up with them. Come forward real quick. Those that raise your hand, come forward. This is a sign of you leaving your old life in those seats and starting a brand new life with Jesus. Come forward. Let's give them a hand as they're coming forward. Today, someone's life is being changed. They're going to start living by the principles of God. Come on. We're going to begin to show them. Show them the walk of God. Show them the abundance that God has for them. Today's their day of healing. Today's their day of freedom. Come on, church. Let's thank God that we serve a God that's calling people, restoring them, and saying it's not over. I'm calling you right now. I'm the one that has your answers. I'm the one that can heal you. I'm the one that can set you free. Come on, they're still coming, church. Just come on, two more minutes of giving praise to God. They're still coming. Some of you right now, you need to come up here because God was, God, come on, God's been speaking to you. You're kind of hesitating, but God's not giving up on you. This is your moment. This is your new beginning. Come on, church, let's give a hand online. We're, congratulations, we'll pray right now. They're still coming. Come forward. I'm Nothing changes until you make a decision. New beginning today, okay, mama? Love you. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you, young man. Awesome. We're going to pray. This morning at 9 o'clock, I... God bless you, honey. God bless you. Love you. Love you. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. Come on, today's your day. Things will change with a decision. God's bigger than your addiction. Come on. God's bigger than your mistakes. God's bigger than your failures. Come on. We've all messed up. Jesus isn't for people that got their act together. Jesus is for people. Man, I've messed up. I've destroyed my life. And God says, that's okay. I restore lives. Come on. I'll revive your life. I'll restore what the enemy stolen from you. It's not over. It's not too late. Friday. I went to Waba Grill, and as I'm a Waba Grill, first time I went to that Waba Grill ever in my life. I went there, and the manager was the one serving me, and I began to ask him, how you doing? He was not so good. He began to talk to him about the problems that they're going through. All of his employees were right there in the room in that same area. I began to tell them about God's plan for their lives, which is good and not evil, hope and a future. And I told them this, no matter how bad your life is right now, it can turn around. If you just follow a new leader, God has principles to make you successful. And the young men that were there are from the neighborhood. And I, I, and I, and I could tell most of, most of the guys from the neighborhood. And we're living in a world where there's no fathers, there's no mentors, there's no leaders. And I began to tell them, I know that all you know is the hustle. The struggle, the pain, the lack, that's all you know. But I told them, if you just come to church, we'll begin to show you the principles. And you'll be able to unlock your own victory, your own peace, your own healing. God loves you. And he's giving you a word. And you know what he told me? He goes, I'll go to church Sunday. He showed up 9 o'clock. He brought his wife. He gave his life to Jesus. They're going to the concert tonight. Things are changing. We're going to pray, church. We need a miracle. You just don't need like a good little talk. It's not a motivational speech. I'm here to connect you with the power of Jesus Christ. And when God gives you instructions, he'll give you the power to do it. Well, I can't do it. God says... You can do it through me. Well, you don't know my life. But God says, I know your life. And you know what I do? I raise the dead. You're not dead. It's going to happen. We're going to pray for freedom today. Some of you have been like in a prison. And God's going to unlock the prison. And you'll leave here with peace again, joy again, hope again, a new beginning. You're going to get, you come on, you're going to leave here an ex-prison. Come on, an ex-con. No more. God's changing your life. Come on, let's do it right now. Let's pray. Let's pray. Come on, let's do it. And I'm going to ask you for this. Give me a year of your life. Give our church a year of your life. You'll never be... Understand this. Only the consistent succeed. 
So don't expect to just get touched today and you got your medication and you're gone. Jesus is not a drug. He's a lifestyle. We're not here to get high. Come on, we're here to enter in a new lifestyle. Come on, new life. I'm going to be here until Jesus sends me home. I ain't going nowhere. And I'm going to ask you this. Will you give us a year of your life? And I guarantee you this, your life will turn around every Sunday. This Wednesday we have church. Tonight, man, you might even want to show up to the concert. But all I'm saying is, you used to party all weekend. You can at least show up to church once or twice a week to get consistent. Because what you're investing in is what you're going to get a return in. Don't expect to get a return if you're not investing consistently. Amen? Come on. You got it? I need you guys. Are you guys ready to make a commitment? Your life will never change without big commitment. You want big change? Make big, big commitments. Sign your life away today. Give your life to the Lord. Restoration begins today. Come on. You and your family. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I've been doing it my way. And I'm sorry, Lord. Set me free from the prison I've been in. Set me free from depression, anxiety, poverty, lack. I am tired. From this day forward, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Give me a new life. I dedicate myself to following you and your principles for the rest of my life. I'll no longer be the same. I rebuke and I command the spirit of destruction to leave my life and leave my family and leave my emotions right now in the name of Jesus. I am a new person. I have eternal life and Jesus is my Lord from this day forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. God bless you. If this is your first time here and you want to say hi to me, I'm going to be up here for a few more minutes. I'd love to shake your hand, talk to you. God bless you. Wednesday night, you don't want to miss it. We're going to be going through these principles Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday. Uh, one principle can unlock your destiny. Today, we learned a few of them. Wednesday, we're going to learn a few more. Sunday, next Sunday, we're going to learn a few more. Keep coming. But if you want to if you want to meet me, I'd love to shake your hand, meet you. I'll be right up here, right here in this section. Love to talk to you. God bless you. Love you guys. Have a great, great afternoon. There's still some tickets.